Hey guys, JT Tran, and yet again, I bring you an amazing special guest, Jessica J from Love of Seduction. Now, Jessica here is professionally trained to actually give dating and relationship advice, but more than that, Jessica has joined the rarefied few of us who have been on national TV like Nightline. Um, but instead of having me regale you with all of her qualifications, Jessica, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background? Well, I am from New Jersey, which should be all you need. Um, I actually came to LA about four years ago to be an American Family Therapist. And in doing that, I would blog about my single sex life here in Hollywood and realized I enjoyed that more than helping people <laughs> solve their family problems. So I started writing sex advice for an instructional porn company. Even longer story short, then I became a dating coach. Wow, look at that. So. Today's topic is, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to love this, how does a guy approach an Asian girl? Is it different than a British really approaching like a white girl or a black girl? Because you're a Filipina, right? That's correct. So how would a guy come up to you, like assuming he's like non-Asian, how would he come up to you as an Asian American? Because there are obviously two types, like Asian yes. Asian and Asian American. Yes. Well, for instance, first I just want to say that the way to not come up to me <laughs> is to ask me what my ethnicity is. Yes. I just, I, I can't even. <laughs> every, me and my Asian girlfriends, we come together and we always talk and text about like the awful things guys say, like yeah. in terms of, so I bet I know what you are. And it's like, oh my God. And you're you like, like you are. Yeah, the worst is if you know my language and you start speaking it, because I don't even speak it. Like, right. that's how Americanized I am. So if you come up to me and you're like, oh, so like, what are you? That's like asking me what my vagina looks like. So <laughs> I don't want to hear that. So if anything, I just want to be talked to like you have something to say in regards to you're not just looking at my face. Okay. You're not just making presumptions about my ethnicity based on what you think might be going on. Right, right. Because I know as an Asian American myself, growing up, whenever someone asks like, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from America, bitch. <laughs> I know, I'm from New Jersey. They're like, no, no. I'm like, fuck, oh, man. So you would say if, if first of all, my advice uh, is understand you know try to understand if they're Asian Asian or they're Asian American because I know I've talked to other Asian girls uh -huh. and when you relate to them the fact that they're from China or Japan they appreciate it because they feel that you're trying to appreciate that culture but if she's an Asian American girl what's happening is you're you're setting her up as different as other as not American because we we're born here we're, yeah. we're citizens of America we consider this ourselves U.S. citizens so. You know, if she's Asian American, don't make that difference, like very pronounced. Yeah, basically, if I if I bring it up, like, oh, I'm Filipino, and then you say something like, oh, that's funny, I like this food because my neighbor's Filipino. That's when I'm like, oh, that's awesome. But if you use it as your gateway to try mm -hmm. to get to me, that's when I'm like, oh, I do not trust this. I'm so like, yeah. appreciate, but don't fetishize. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we can't stand guys with Asian girl fetishes. It's so creepy. It's right, creepy. right, right. Um, so, you know, continuing for okay, mm -hmm. now a lot of my students, and I'm sure your students as well, mm -hmm. they have a difficulty continuing conversation. They go on a date, or they, you know, open an attractive Asian girl like yourself, and then they're like, oh, what do I say? They brain fart, right? Yes. So what would you, what's your advice to guys like that? Okay, what I like to say is the best way to stay focused on the conversation is to think three things. It's okay. me you and us. And the further away we get from those three things, the more further away she gets from the conversation. So when you say me, you, and us, yeah. what do you mean by that? Okay, so for example, there's three ways you can run out of steam in a conversation. Okay. The first way is with something I like to call Google gaming. <laughs> That's basically when you talk about things that anybody can Google, whether it's the traffic, the weather, okay. you know, haircuts, I don't know, I just at your hair. But <laughs> if it's anything that has to do, it doesn't have to do with either of us, both of us are going to check out. You're right, going to so get don't bored. Google don't Google game. Right. You're going to get bored and she's going to get bored listening. The second way is when you over talk about yourself okay. or over talk about her. Whether it's where you're from, oh, what do you do? Oh, how do you like the city? Oh, what are you doing now? It's like, <laughs> get over me! Because every girl spends an hour getting ready, putting on makeup, and like, I want to be interviewed today. Yeah, I want somebody to ask me 800 questions. That is not the way to go. Or if you're sitting there and you're just talking, talking, talking about yourself and you didn't even hear, I'm mm -hmm. trying to be in the conversation with you. 
So th that's the second way you'll run out of steam. The third way you'll run out of steam is if you are in a certain level of conversation too long, whether it's platonic, playful, or flirty. So basically, the, the instinctual drive you have to move forward with a woman is gonna kick in, and you're gonna feel it, and you're gonna know it, but you're gonna run out of steam if you don't level up. <laughs> and that's level up seduction for you video gaming nerds out there. Yes! Grab it, level up. <laughs> All right, that's really great advice. I love that. Right Glad. now, what's a common obstacle? Like a student will come to you with, like a client will come to you and say, you know, I have this challenge. And what's a typical one? And how do you help him overcome that challenge? Um, the most common thing I hear is I get too wound up in my head. Whether it's I, you know, I overthink and I don't approach, I overthink and I run out of steam like we just talked about. Analysis paralysis. Yeah, or I, I'm in my head, I don't know what she's thinking, if she likes me, if she's into me. It's just overthinking about all the other things besides what you actually want. Or that's what I say to my clients. Okay. So what I specialize in, especially in therapy is what I learned, is just have a redirect to really ask yourself what you want, what you think of the situation, and where to go from there. Okay. Very cool. Now, how can our audience find more about you, Jessica, and Level Up Seduction? Well, <laughs> you can find out more about well, what we were talking about in terms of conversation um, is speak to sparkarousal.com. That's my three step system for sparking arousal. I don't know if you got that from the title, but that's more to come. Levelupseduction.com is also the website. Yes. And check that out. Links will be down there, okay? I'm raising the room. Yes, raising the room. Raising. Uh, yeah, man, <laughs> in the room. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Jessica. All right, guys. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to check out our website. All information is down here. Later. Hello. Would you like to be my Valentine's? Would, would you like to be my Valentine? Why not? You have a Valentine's date today? Where are you from? I'm from the 